Hey, what's up guys? You got Dom back and bring you another Pokemon shit on live in the Gen 7 Pokebank OU tier. Today we're going to be using a team built around Silvali Water with 4 attacks in modest nature with max HP. This thing's actually really bulky and its coverage makes it a little bit hard for people to switch in on and you get really key dents on things. Um, then we got Mar standard, Spidef Mar Mar standard Spidef Marowak with Thick Club. It's just a staple on my teams. It's really good and I cannot deny that. Um, Assault Vest Titar, which is a throwback to Oras, and something I really like. And then we've got Thunderbolt just because there's a lot of uh, Pelipers flying around. No pun intended. Sharpedo Knight because I really want to use it with Psychic Fangs. That's an amazing move. Like this makes it so it can like to KO uh, Mega Venusaur. I'm pretty sure. Um, you know, Magnezone, which pairs really well with uh, the Marowak. Like it's just really, really good. And Hidden Power Ground again to hit other Marowaks. And then we've got a Last Resort, Last Resort, our Porygon Z, which is going to be Adaptability Normalium Z conversion. Um, I actually think I'm going to speed make this thing speed creep. Uh, what do you call it? Pheromosa after it Mega Evolves. So hold on, let me do the math real quick. So it hits 441, I'm pretty sure, divided by 1.5. So it needs to be 294 or 295, I guess, to outspeed it. Then we'll put the rest in HP. And uh, yeah, that's the team. Let's go ahead and grab a battle. Testing it out, um, I don't know. It just seems like seems like people always had stuff that's like a hard counter to my mons. The other thing is this team is pretty slow. So it's like bulky offense, and then you just have to rely on Sharpedo and Porygon Z to clean up, pretty much. Um, I played a lot of teams with like six UBs, and like they're pretty broken. Like I'm not gonna lie, they're they're really really strong. Uh, when it's one on one team, it's not really a big deal, but like six UBs, like oh my gosh, it was it was pretty difficult. Um, so on the bright side here, I think I can lead with uh, Magnezone fairly easily. If he leads with his own Magnezone, I'm just gonna go for a Hidden Power Ground. Another thing I noticed is that Porygon Z puts in a lot of work. See, so these are Sableye. That is totally fine. I'm just going to go right for a Volt Switch. Clean 48%. Um, and I'm going to go into Marowak. That way he can't will o -Wisp me. He just goes for a cover. Good play on his part. Um, let's see. He'll probably knock me off here. What is my response to this? I think Silvali's fine. Just because, I mean, if he does choose to knock me off, I'm pretty sure you can't knock off a memory. I don't know what that says about the damage or anything. Yep, there's the knockoff. We do keep our item. I'm gonna go for the Surf here. Stall him out of recovers, I guess. Sableye is really hard, gonna be really hard for me to break through just simply because I don't have any fairy type moves and nor do I really have anything that hits it very hard. Like I'm pretty sure Magnus is my best bet for that. So what I need to do is weaken him and have something go down and then probably have like a Thunderbolt or Flash Cannon later on. He doesn't really have a good switch into a Thunderbolt though on the bright side, especially if he gets up his own electric terrain, then it's gonna be really hard for him to switch in things. Like, Keldeo drops, Magirna drops, uh, Sableye drops in Electric Terrain, Tabu Coco takes like 72% in Electric Terrain, uh, Salamence will drop, and I'm pretty sure Magnezone gets to it KO'd by Thunderbolt in Electric Terrain. Specs Thunderbolt at least, Specs Modest. Oh, come on, dude. Alright, I'll pause it till he makes a move. And I keep doing that. Well, Alright, so he chose to go into his Salamence, which is a fair play on his part. Um, I'm really hoping he stays in and lets me take this. I'm gonna go for the Ice Beam. He said sorry, I had to go do something. No worries, bro. And the Magnus only goes. Hopefully he's not scar- well, even if he's specs max speed, we're going to be boned. I'm just gonna go for the Flamethrower. He should be expecting the- Alright, so he goes back in the Salamence. So he's going to see my whole set. If we get a burn here, I'm going to laugh. We get a crit there. Um, let's see. He's pretty free to just go into Sableye again, but I'm actually just going to go for the Flamethrower once more. Just because if he go, just chooses to go into um, Keldeo. Okay. Uh, this lets me get burns on things. That's basically what I'm trying to say. He goes for the Secret Sword, and we'll get off a big Thunderbolt on this. Not quite knocking it out. Uh, 37.6. So it's probably that was probably a low roll in all honesty. Um, 
Why does Keldeo just blow my team back? Like, I literally don't have anything I can do against it. Uh, we'll just go for another Thunderbolt, just in case he misses. Or not misses, in case that was a, like, mid-roll. I don't feel like pulling off the calc. Yeah, it's like baby Arceus, but it's a lot worse than Arceus. Like, a lot worse. Um, I don't know, he's making a lot of tryhard plays, so I really think he's gonna just go hard stable in here. But if I lose this, then I pretty much lose the battle. So I have to protect. Alright, fine, 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 fine. So I made the correct play. If he's scarfed, though, I guess we'll find out here. Yep, he's scarfed. Alright, um... Meaning I can bring this guy out and just go for a Shadow Bone. So we lost one of our win cons early, unfortunately. He's definitely Fat Talent. Definitely Fat Talent. So what I'm going to do here is go into Kitar. Just because I'm expecting um, him to be like the special like Draco Meteor Wish set. I haven't seen any moves from him, but the way he's bringing it in, it's definitely a more defensive variant. And I can fire off Stone Edges. Yep, there's the pump. Did absolutely zero to me. I'm actually gonna pursue here, expecting him to switch out. He'll probably roost and then switch. Nope. Into Magirna, actually. Good plan, his part. Um, I'll just go into Marowak because in theory, Magirna should not be able to touch me. Come on, dude. Make your plays. Alright, so he doubles in the Magna Zone. I don't know if he's going to have HP ground or not. But, I mean, we live HP ground on, like, 2%. So I'm just going to go right for a Shadow Bone again. Um, if he does choose to bring up Salamence, and Salamence will drop. He's going to go for Flash Cannon. We're going to get a big hit off on Magna Zone. Not quite going to knock it out. But I'll just go for another Shadow Bone. I have no reason not to. Knockout Salamence there. Keldeo is going to come back out, so he's pretty much forced into going for the Scald. So we'll go into Titar. So he goes for the Hydro Pump. Interesting. And I'm going to pursue here just in case he decides to switch out. I mean, he should just go for the Hydro Pump again. But if he switches out, we'll be able to knock it out. So that's another turn of sand. And we can go into Magna Zone because we will most certainly be able to take that. And we can just click Volt Switch. I hit something hard. Again, if I can if I can just get Porygon in safely so I can go for the conversion, then I'll be in a really good spot. I think Sableye is probably the best setup fodder. Maybe Magirna. He probably has R Spear though, but we're faster, so we'll get this with F boost and it won't be super effective. I'm actually pretty sure Magirna can't really do much to an electric type as well. Like Zapdos, pretty much hard walls Magirna, besides Ice Beam, I guess. He could get a crit hydro pump, I guess, and probably knock us out, which would blow, but we do have a lot of HP investment. And we got decent for death. He actually misses his Hydro Pump, which is really cool. Meaning we are pretty free to go back into Marowak, and there's not really much he can do. Like, something's gonna have to take a big hit. Magirna can't touch me, Tapu Koko can't touch me, Magnezone can't touch me, and Sableye can knock me off, that's about it. Which is actually gonna suck if he does. But I'm actually, I'll be kinda happy if he does that, because that means that I can bring in Porygon, and he'll have a bunch of damage taken off on him. We even have the opportunity to get off the uh, defense drop. Ah, and we're gonna die to stand. Beautiful. Meaning he will be within range of a Thunderbolt. Now, question is, do we go for the Hidden Fire Ground expecting his own Magnus Zone to come in, or do we... I think Volt Switching is the best play, actually. 
Because if he chooses to go into Magma Zone, then we can just get off our conversion. If he chooses to stay in, then he'll still be low enough to the point where conversion will uh, behoove us. There's the knockoff. And we'll go for the Z conversion right here on his recover, and then we can just start spamming Thunderbolts. Nice. And we'll just go for the Thunderbolt right here. Actually, Shadow Ball, just in case he chooses to switch something in. I guess it decided Thunderbolt's the best way to go with that. Now, I don't know if a... Uh, I know this is going to do like 70% to this, and I don't think he has anything that can actually take me out. I mean, maybe a Dazzling Gleam. I don't know. 280 Spadef. Yeah, we're pretty frail. That's only probably two to with this. Again, is pretty strong, especially if he specs. Or if he has Floor Cannon, that will take us out. Especially since we're not modest. Hmm. I don't know, this could go either way. Oh my gosh, what the? Porygon, calm down! He had to be like a max... He, he was probably specs, honestly. Now, question is, does a electric terrain... I'm pretty sure Thunderbolt still does more. Let's, let's find out. Oh my god. A crit might have mattered. A crit might have mattered. And we will just go for a Thunderbolt just for fuck's sake. And that's going to be GG. Oh, he just left. Alright, let's grab another one. That, that battle went pretty well. It was pretty, pretty scary towards the end there. Pretty scary towards the end there. Oh, Ductrio. Ductrio destroys us. Good lord. But on the other hand, Sharpedo just wins. I mean, once Sizzler is taken care of. We can just lead off with Silvali fairly freely here. Actually, no. I want to lead off with... Yeah, Silvali's fine. Uh, his best answer to Silvali is honestly probably Tapu Lele. If that is what comes out, but actually getting damage off on this, I'm not really upset about. I'm just gonna ride for a surf. Get as much damage off on it as I can. This will probably only do like 40% if that. It's got base 115 spadef. But we got this. We got this. We just have to play really carefully around the Dugio, that's all. Gengar is actually still a pretty big threat to us as well. Sharpedo. Alright, so we just left there, I guess. Um, I'll pause it in case he comes back. Alright, so he came back when there's 20 seconds left and turned out to be Specs and blew me back with the Psychic. Good lord. I'm gonna Pursuit Trap this man immediately. Immediately. In the Duck Trio, he's gonna go... Oh, he actually goes in a Sizzler. Interesting. Um, I don't know. I feel like no matter what I switch into here, I'm in a bad spot. I'm gonna go into uh, Marowak. He goes in the Duck Trio, as I expected. But you can't trap a Ghost type, fam. You can't trap a Ghost type. Not that it really helps me because I don't have a switch in anyway. Um, I'm gonna go for the Will O Wisp just in case I live by the grace of God. By the grace of God. We live. Do we hit the Will O Wisp? We do hit the Will O Wisp. Beautiful. And I'm just gonna go for a Shadow Bone. Nice, and this actually gives me an opportunity to set up with my Porygon, unless he has Memento. We'll find out right now. If he does, then we're about to get screwed. Nope, he chooses to switch out in a Sizzler, meaning Thunderbolt will knock him out, even if he's Mega Sizzler. Oh, I guess unless he's like the death, but this is really strong. He actually lives that interesting. He's going for the Bug Bite. I'll go for the Thunderbolt. And what that burn did was allowed me to ensure that he, his sash will be broken if it is there. Um, Latios probably lives an Ice Beam, unfortunately. But now that we've gotten rid of Scizor, we can pretty much just win with Sharpedo. 
I need a little bit more dam a little bit of damage on T-Tar, and I have to break the sash of Gengar. But we still have our Latios around. I mean, our T-Tar around, so we have ways to deal with this. If he brings in the Latios, then we do have the T-Tar still with the AV, and it's it. Full health still, so yeah. He brings in T-Tar. Um, all right, we'll just click Thunderbolt here. Clean 60%. There's the crunch. And we'll bring in... I don't think he'd have Earthquake, would he? We'll bring him in Magnum Zone and hope that he doesn't have Earthquake, I guess. That's about all we can do. We'll just go for a Flash Can. It hits everything really hard. The other thing is he'd have to be like invested in speed, so he just gets up rocks. Late game rocks. Into Dougie he goes. We actually live the Earthquake and knock out Dugshio. Beautiful. So now literally we win unless for some strange reason his Gengar is Scarfed or Sashed. We'll go for the Flash Cannon here. Yeah, I'm pretty sure last month Trapedo wins. Bring in our old boy, uh, T-Tar. Now we'll go for the Pursuit just because we will be able to knock out the Latios and, uh, Honestly, a crunch still might have been a fine play. That crit's actually going to be pretty annoying because, uh, oh, wow, that didn't kill him. So he's going to get two hits off on us. Sand's going to go away as well. And the Tapu Lele, he goes. Goes for the Moonblast. So now we bring out Sharpedo, and we click Protect. If he switches into Gengar, yeah, this is the best case scenario, because if he switches into Gengar, then his Protect would have failed. And I'm actually going to stay normal, and I'm just going to go for the Crunch. Nice. So, yeah, he has to be Sash pretty much to win. Because we're now faster than him if he Scarfed or Mega Evolved and go for this Crunch. Not Sash, and that's going to be GG. Beautiful. Good game. That's what I'm talking about. That is a good game right there. We're at 17 minutes, so let's grab one more battle. One more battle. This lap's going pretty well. It's going pretty well. Oh my gosh, that's disgusting to look at. That's actually disgusting. Um, I'm going to lead off with Porygon this time. I'm going to just play super aggressively from the get-go. That's what we have to do with these kind of teams. If he leads with Tapu Lele or Hoopa, we're going to get blown back. If he leads off with Genesect, we will be able to live one hit. If he leads off with Landorus, I have to hope that he's going to either U-turn and get up his rocks. If he leads off with Hoopa, uh, I mean, it's a fair play because we don't have a switch into it. Um, I'm going to Z-convert, though. Please live hyper speed. Okay, he goes for Drain Punch. So that's awesome. He was expecting the T-Tar. I almost clicked T-Tar, but I didn't really want to do that this early. I'm going to go for the Thunderbolt here. I don't even think this knocks it out, though. That's the thing. Yeah. He goes for Drain Punch again. He doesn't have priority on his team either. So I'm just going to go for Thunderbolt one more time. I have to hope he's not Scarfed Lando. He goes into Landers. Are you Scarfed? That is the question. I almost clicked Ice Beam there too. Please. So it goes into Genesect. And Genesect is faster than us, unfortunately, if he's Scarfed. And he's definitely Scarfed. Uh, we gotta let this go down. But we got damage on a lot of his mons, I guess. Not really. Maybe we should have kept that in the back. What I'm going to do here is bring in old boy and go right for a shadow bone, I think. Now he's probably going for Z-Hypnosis, so I'm going to bring out t actually. And just go for a Stone Edge. In fact, maybe Pursuit's even better. He does have the Energy Ball and Tail Glow. Although I really think he'd, he, he's going to want to switch out into his... Uh, I think he's going to want to switch out into his Landers here. Uh... I don't know. Landers is actually going to be pretty difficult to play around. 
I, I see a lot of people using Mega Sharpedo and Mega Gyarados just because being fast and being able to hit really hard is really good right now. Uh, I'm just going to crunch here. Just because if he does choose to go out into Landorus, then we will be able to get some damage off on it, and we really do need that. We took a lot more damage than we needed to here, unfortunately. I'm expecting Genesect to come in here. Yeah, I think that's what he has to do. Or not have to do, but I, I just think either coming in with Landorus and getting up rocks maybe, or just you turning out on Genesect. The only problem with him doing that is that it gives me momentum, so I really think he's going to want to go out into Landorus. I'll pause it till he makes sense. Alright, so as I said, he did choose to go out into Landorus here, and I'm actually just going to go for a... Uh, I'm going to go for a crunch, because we could get... It, it doesn't miss for one, so we'll get at least some chip damage off. Um, if he does choose to get up his rocks here, and we have the chance to lower his defense, meaning that I can bring something in. So he gets his rocks up. Does a clean 30% actually. He's faster than us though. Knocks us out with Earthquake. But what we can do now is bring in the monster Silvali. And we can just go for a Surf. He doesn't really have switch into a Surf. If he wants to bring in his, uh, sorry, my girlfriend just got home. If he wants to bring in his, uh, Hoopa, Hoopa's, what, 60%? If I'm not, 51%. So I'm pretty sure I'll get to it KO'd by, uh, pretty sure I'll get to hit KO by a Surf. And again, he's taking a while to make his move, so I'm just gonna pause it again until he makes it. Alright, sorry, he made the move while I wasn't looking. He actually chose to stay in with his Landers, and I was able to knock him clean out with a Surf, so that's really good for us. Um, meaning that. I guess best case scenario for him is he brings in the Tapu Lele, and Tapu Lele will be able to, if it's Specs, it will be able to knock us clean out, unfortunately. If he's Scarfed, then, I mean, we'll be able to get some damage off on it. Regardless, I think I'm kind of forced to stay in with this, because we don't have a switch into Tapu Lele. We also need a little bit of shit damage off on the Genesect and Sharpedo for our own Sharpedo to be able to pick up a win here as well. So he decides to go into Hoopa, um, we'll just go for the Surf here. Don't have a switch into Hoopa either, his whole team is just stuff we don't have switch into. And he's still taking a long time to make his moves, man. There's the Hyperspace Fury. So Savali's not super bulky, but it's not not bulky, I guess. Again, I'm just gonna go for a Surf. Even if he goes into Sharpedo, I would actually love that because Sharpedo is still going to take like a decent amount of damage from a Surf just because it has no bulk to it, you know? He brings in his Sharpedo and I will just go for a Thunderbolt here. He goes for the Protect. Now I don't know if he has Earthquake. I'm pretty sure we just lose if he does have Earthquake. So he just knocks us out with the crunch. So here, here goes. Here, here we go. We gotta hope he doesn't have the earthquake. Do not have the earthquake. Do not have the earthquake. I beg of you, do not have the earthquake. We'll just go for the volt switch. Earthquake's kind of standard on Sharpedo though, so he most likely does. Oh my gosh, he doesn't have it. I should have gone for the flash cannon there. We will get a nice, big, juicy specs volt switch off though, and we can bring in our own Sharpedo. Because that means Magnezone potentially wins alongside Marowak, and I'm just going to start uh, protecting here. He goes into Genesect, so that means it failed, meaning we can go for another Protect, and then we can go for a Crunch right after this. And it's not Frail per se, but I'm pretty sure Genesect doesn't take a Adamant Crunch from a uh, Mega Sharpedo. The Counter Sweep! Let's go for the Strong Jaw Crunch real quick. Gone. Uh, and I think we just go for the crunch here because we're faster than him at this point. Uh, 
Um, I don't know. I might have just choked right there. He goes for the poison jab. So again, I'm just gonna volt switch here. Okay. Yeah. We live the crunch. Knockout Sharpedo. And he forfeits. So that's gonna be GG. That is what I call a good live right there. So uh, yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. So Volley is, it's okay. The, the real big problem with it I see is that you, if you want to run a type that's not normal, you pretty much are forced to run like all offense if you wanted to do anything. Even like you saw there, it was like modest max special attack and its attacks weren't really doing anything. The only good thing about it is that it can't, like things can't really switch into it reliably because it has coverage for virtually uh, virtually everything, if not neutrally, and super effectively, so it, it's decent. And you know, the rest of the team just supported it well. And Mega Sharpedo is really good this generation, so thank you guys so much for watching. Please leave a like and subscribe if you did. Peace.